Israel are blessed people tuned in from all across the globe. The Lord Jehovah Elohim, the Lord Jehovah Yahweh, Jehovah Mekadishken, Jehovah Mefalti, Jehovah Hashofet, the great righteous judge, Jehovah Sabaoth, Jehovah El Gibor, Jehovah Rohi, the Lord our shepherd. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. He has spoken with me, beloved people. This past night, the Lord had a tremendous conversation with me. An almost historic conversation in this cadre of events, in this level. Again, this past night, blessed people, the Lord Jehovah spoke with me. This night coming into the morning of November 16th, the year 2018, He spoke with me in a very historic way. And I will describe it and then eventually I will open it up a little bit, just a little bit for now. And then I know this is going to be a continuing developing story. And uh, the Lord Jehovah, he took me to a place. And then I saw the banks of a river. And that part of the river, the water had come out. Out had gone had, had gone a little bit inland, so it became like you would think it like piece of a pool, or you would think it's a small lake. Very pure, clean water, very, very pure blue water, a little bit dark blue, but very pure, clean water. He made me know pure, clean, and that part, and then connected to the main river. And so, as he brought me by it. That part of the banks of the river where the water spills out a little and forms what would look like a lake as it goes into the mainstream river. And then it was amazing. It was absolutely very amazing to me, beloved people, that when I looked into the water at the bank, but within the river, again, that part of the river where the water has spilled out into a zone and from something what you think is like a little lake, but it's not. Very pure water as it joins the mainstream. The ages of that, between that and where I was, between that water body and the land, the narrow ages there, a lot of tall green grass that is growing very well very green and long. You could see the growing within the pure water. Very healthy grass. Very healthy grass. And they are in big bundles. These huge bundles of healthy and long because they are growing within the water. At the banks of the river. The pure water. At the banks of the river. And so when I looked right in there at the banks, then I saw some fat cattle, and they were feeding on this wonderful, healthy green grass by the banks of the river. And they were feeding, they were eating very well, and the Lord brought me close, so they were eating and looking at me. They wanted me to get their attention. But they were so healthy, very fat, and very beautifully fat, and very healthy. Extremely very healthy, and very rosy, and very round, and very wonderfully taken care of. And they were busy eating those bundles of long, healthy grass that was by the river, by the banks of the river. And they were within the water, as they did so, they are within the water, by the way. By the way, they are within the water, and the water is coming almost up to the level of their legs as they are eating the long strands of bundles of 
healthy grass. They are eating and they are very fat and they are very healthy. Though I did not count them, but they were busy eating and they were looking at me. And then the Lord makes one of them that was closest to me to walk so I could see that the hind leg, the hind leg is like uh, you would put probably a normal cow in Kenya, for example, you would have to put probably seven cows, the legs of cows, to make that one leg. That's just how healthy they were. So huge, uh, the huge legs, healthy, very, very healthy. So they were eating by the banks of this river this past night, and this is a very historic conversation, very shocking that the Lord has spoken in this way. And the huge healthy bundles of, of grass, healthy grass, they were eating and they in the water. So they are walking in the water. The water is reaching up to the ends of their legs where their legs come close to the stomach level. And they are eating and very healthy. They are round. One leg of them is like putting together seven legs of your average Kenyan cow's leg. That is just how healthy they are. The Lord makes me, he wants me to see how healthy. That's how he does it as they walk. And then after that, I go a little bit forward. And it brings me to a place that I see a lot of people. I see a lot of people that are in depravity. And then there is more conversation I will bring to you, even as the Lord allows me. I just want to end it here. Then I see, I see people, I see some people come to me with a box, they are carrying a box and so forth. But you see, I'm talking about these very healthy animals here. I would like to end right with the healthy animals here. And so, um, this conversation is very shocking. When I woke up in the morning, then I realized, that this conversation is in the Bible. And that this is the dream that the king had, and Joseph interpreted this dream. So I would like to announce the first part of this conversation. I would like to announce that there is going to be a bumper harvest, a bumper provision that is coming to the land. And I do not know whether it's coming to the entire globe, because I know the Lord is going to gradually come and unveil a lot of things to me. He will unveil to the two, probably one at a time or together. But as he unveils to me, I will always faithfully come back to you and let you know. But I thought that the healthy one, of course, tell you that there's a very huge bumper harvest, wonderful years of prosperity ahead of us here. I have not known whether it's global, but for now, it was happening here, the dream, it might be global. And we know too well that when bumper harvest of that biblical nature and proportion does take place, many know that most likely other years might follow, but I leave that a little bit more. I give it more time for the Lord to reveal to me more. Because remember, it is his prerogative, it is his preserve. It is under the realm of his sovereignty to see what to unveil with time. And I do not want to go ahead of myself, but I just know that there's going to be wonderful years of prosperity in this land. And if it will affect all the other nations, the Lord will show me wonderful years of uh, harvest with bumper harvest and all this. It's all in the Bible. And during that time, of course, every single person in the land knows that they have to take care of the harvest very well and they have to do the exploits of the Lord. And this could also mean the wonderful years before the church is taken, the years of grace before there is depravity and lack of grace. But for now, 
I'll leave it to the preserve of the Lord. But when the Spirit of the Lord will unveil more, then I'll come back to you. But it looks like there's going to be great prosperity in this land, great harvest of crop. Families that are poor will eat, they'll be plenteous in the land. And if it's global, the Lord will come back and instruct me accordingly. Again, there is a big river, but there's a portion where the river spills out inland and forms what you think is a lake that eventually connects the main stream that is flowing and with beautiful, bluish water, fresh and clean. And I'm standing on the dry land, and between the dry land and the main water body of the river, there is a segment of the river that is the banks of the river, and there are some fat cows, very healthy cows, wonderfully healthy, well fed, and I see a lot of healthy grass they are eating. I want to leave it at this point and wait on the Lord that I will give you further instruction, even as the Lord does instruct. So there is blessing, big blessings of the Lord coming to the land, but the Lord is asking for prudence, that this generation may be prudent in taking the exploits of the Lord, in managing the custodianship over the blessings of the Lord, and navigate themselves to glorify the Lord during that time. There is a big blessing coming to the land, and if it will extend before this country, I will let you know. But for now, I will restrict you to this land. Beloved people, the Messiah is coming. Those who have ears should know that surely indeed the Lord God Almighty has spoken. Prepare the way, the Messiah is coming. Shalom to the, to the, to the, to the Hashem, to the Elohim, to the Haver Sheli, to the Rabbah. I just wanted to revisit with you on the conversation that the Lord uh, had with this nation yesterday, the historic conversation that the Lord has had with this nation yesterday. And uh, this is a very, very powerful time in the history of the church. It's a very mighty hour in the church. Again, this very deep and very profound biblical conversation that the Lord had yesterday with this nation and this church. And uh, I want to go through it again. In that conversation, I am walking, and it makes me walk by a river, a very massive river. And that river, there is a portion at which the water goes out a little inland, and form the, something that you think a small lake or a pool, but very clear and pure, clean water, like kind of dark blue water, very clean. You let me know it's very clean water, very pure water. And that connects to the mainstream of the river that is flowing, the larger part of the river that's flowing. And there's a section at which it goes inland a bit, as it flows to the mainstream. And so the Lord makes me walk on the land by the banks of the river. And then at that point in time, he then shows me these very healthy cattle, healthy cows, very, very healthy cows that are feeding at the banks of the river. And I want to now give deeper details. Those cows are not on land. They don't feed on the land. Initially, many times, I too thought they were feeding on the land. Those cows actually are in the water, except that the water is reaching up to their knee, around their knee, close to their stomach. And by the banks, he means water up to the knees. And they are walking, and there are long strands. There are long strands of healthy grass that is growing in bulk, in bunches, in different bunches, healthy, long strands of grass, long stems of grass growing there, and they are eating, they are eating as they are walking on the water there. It's a very powerful, beautiful conversation.
salvation of the Lord. And so they are walking in that water by the bank. When he says the bank, they are really walking in the water, not on the land. I was standing on the land. They are walking on the water there up to their knees, and they are walking on the grass that is on the water there with very healthy grass, very powerful green grass, and they are eating the grass. They are eating, and the Lord makes them look at me. He makes the cows, the very healthy cows that are eating, look at me. And he makes, he makes one walk close to me. And then I realized that the leg, the leg, the hind leg I saw, is equivalent to seven legs of a nice, healthy cow that you know are that now on this earth. That's huge and very healthy. Like sevenfold, one leg has seven legs of the cow you know as cow today. A healthy cow. So they are very, very healthy, very huge, very fat, and very wonderful looking, sleek. And they are eating, they are eating, they are eating the grass, they are looking at me, they are walking in that water, and the body of the river is on the other side, but they are at this portion near the land. And so, after that, then I came to you yesterday on this conversation. This is a very beautiful conversation that the Lord has spoken to this land. The Lord has spoken a very powerful conversation in this land. And this is also a very historic conversation. Because you know too well that when the Lord presented this tremendous dream of the fat cow, when he presented these cows in the dream at that time in Egypt, that marked the birth of the nation of Israel. So this conversation essentially is of a very high plane, a high cadre, a high level. This conversation essentially applies to Israel. But then now, he uses the same conversation to come to bless the nation of Kenya. This is very astounding. So this is a very high conversation the Lord has spoken to this land. Because this conversation, when it took place in the Bible, the first time he this conversation, he essentially passed out the nation of Israel because then you see Joseph coming to interpret these cows and that was the passing out of the nation of Israel and the promise of Abraham and the entire journey until the Messiah comes out. The Torah is given, the Ten Commandments given, the word of the Lord and then eventually uh, the Messiah comes. So this is a very serious monumental conversation that has taken place. But now the Lord attributes it, he speaks to Kenya, he attributes it to Kenya and to this ministry of repentance and holiness, to the land of Kenya, the leadership of this land, to this church and to the happening around this country. So this is very shocking that the Lord could choose in his grace, in his mercy, in his great love and spoken love, the love that is unfathomable, cannot be understood in this life. But when you look back, then you understand why the Lord has spoken this. And this kind of blessing he says is bringing to this land. You can imagine the different cascades and the different spectra, the spectrum of this blessing. You can imagine the entire nine years is covered in here. I'll remove you from shame. I'll fill your granaries. I'll provide for you. You will discover, I don't know what will come. Then the souls will come to the Lord. The grand harvest will come to you. The the bands of the Lord will be full of the harvested souls. The grace will pour here. The revival will be here. Salvation will increase exponentially. You don't know what the Lord will do. You can see that when he sent these two prophets to Lima, Peru just recently, then they command heaven to open and gold, pure gold pours from heaven. And I have a greater detail of how that happened. I even saw the window and he that pushed a huge, a huge piece of gold that came all the way and became dust down here. I saw his hand as he pushed. So there is very deep and profound conversation going on right now between heaven and earth. But I'm just saying that you can understand now. You can understand that this nation has hosted the two tremendous principles of heaven in this land. You can understand why. Why the Lord shows such a disposition of love and grace. 
people are now running to church. Today, people are running to church. They pack a small bag. They take their children, and they are rushing to church. They are now in churches waiting for tomorrow's Sunday service. You can understand why the Lord has decided to show such an uncommon disposition of love, tremendous love, and unfathomable, unquantifiable love unto this land. You can imagine for yourself how and why. Very repentant. I'm told yesterday the entire land was celebrating and they were repenting. And in the morning, almost everybody down now, everyone went down repenting to the Lord. You can imagine why the Lord has decided to open this massive historic blessing and point to this land. This is a shocking time in the history of the church. This same country we are talking about, this same land has hosted the two dreadful principles of the Lord that are going to be very important in the, in the next dispensation here. This same country has received repentance and holiness. They're always pursuing righteousness. They're always in repentance. They're very sensitive to the Lord. They have not allowed the things of the world to do what they have done with the other nations to the extent that those nations are virtually heedless. This same nation is right now building a huge tabernacle for the cloud of God. So you can imagine why the love of God is poured here, together with its leaders all blessed, with the entire leadership of this land. This same nation is right now building a historic tabernacle to house the cloud of God. And they're running to church. All the time repenting. Very sensitive. Right now as we speak, people have packed their beds and they have arrived in churches with their children. They are waiting for tomorrow's service. You can imagine for yourself why the Lord has decided to do this monumental historic blessing upon this land. And you can imagine for yourself when all this begins now to unfold, the different spectra, the spectrum of this blessing, the hierarchy and the cadre and the rank and the different levels in this land. And you know too well that this also strongly bespeaks eternity, eternity. So this is an extreme lesson for all the other nations to really, really embrace repentance and stop the haughtiness and humble and listen to the voice of the Lord. So tomorrow, Thanksgiving services will be all over the country. So you can imagine the aroma and the fragrance of Thanksgiving and worship. They say tomorrow is only going to be worship, reading scriptures of how Jesus blessed the church and worshiping and thanking the Lord and women, will ring across the entire land tomorrow. Begelegele to the Lord. Relation to the Lord Jesus. Relation to Jehovah. Relation to the Holy Spirit. You can imagine. Beloved people, this revival is awesome. Let all nations now Submit to the voice of the Lord. And get out of the arrogance, the haughtiness, you know. This is Jehovah, the dreadful God of Israel, the creator of heaven. The one that sends people to heaven, and is the same one that sends people to hell. Now, he is speaking to the church, beloved people. Those that will humble, look now. He will speak goodness, greatness, blessedness to them. Bliss, peace, fellowship, eternity, everlasting life. The Messiah is coming. May the Lord bless you. So I bless you all, beloved people, as you go to church tomorrow in this land. That even as you celebrate, you remember the scriptures on blessedness. There are scriptures like Revelation chapter 19, verse 9. Blessed are those who are invited in the wedding feast. Look at all scriptures that deal with the blessings of God. When he says those who are blessed, you read it, Revelation, those in Sardis, those who are blessed, you know. And yet he's coming also to give physical provision for you and remove you from shame. And remember, all this is geared to focus the church into eternity. May the Lord bless you and bless you eternally in this land as you worship in thanksgiving tomorrow. Shalom to them. <laughs>